Well, we're just doing a quick video here. Uh, just the band's been jamming down in the basement. It's just gonna go over what gear they're using and how it's working for them. So let's have two of these Mackie PA speakers. Uh, part of the singer's kit. And uh, he's using a Sure microphone. Uh, and that just goes through his um, PA system. So just uh, <clears throat> into the PA app and then to the board. And they're all kind of sharing the board. So the singer's on the, the white channel, one here, and then backups on the others. Let's have them listed there. And then the drums are Yamaha. Mainly Zildjian cymbals and some, or Sabian kind of higher cymbals and Zildjian on that side. Uh, got a pearl seat. Right now using the Yamaha hi-hat and then an old set of floor toms that we got in the States a while ago used. We tried a new set, this um, set here, but they're not working as well. So we reset them, just haven't put them on the, to try them again, but we'll give them another shot. Uh, rhythm guitar is using the Yant or Fender Mustang. This uh, has good sound for recording, basically. Uh, we're using both, both outputs to this amp. Amp split in two. Uh, two speakers each output. I thought they used a rattle more, but the Mustang just nice and simple. Just turn it on. It's modeling amps. You just go to your favorite model and set it up, and it's always going to sound good, the exact way you want it to sound. And the lead guitar is using this Mesa sometimes or he brings his own Marshall, a JCM 900. Uh, Mesa's kind of finicky. It doesn't always sound the same. So it's not the best to record with and stuff because one day it's awesome, next day it's just not the same. Now they can't dial it in, it's got a ton of controls on it, but it's a pretty involved amplifier. It's good if you like to noodle with it and change it all the time. I do have a direct out From there to the Behringer recorder. And then the bass players using Space Master app. They went together and got it. The buckets are just uh, isolate the microphone, so they have towels in them. <clears throat> There's the microphone in there. It just helps keep the drum noise out. Basically the drums flood everything. So this is a is not a studio. This is just to record how the jam went, how the songs are coming out. So a bucket there, there, and there. Just to kind of keep the drum noise out and so they don't cross each other and muddy each other up uh, too much. And that P is pointing that way. So it's not, right in the mic, but the singer and the rhythm can hear it. And then bass and drum kind of hear this one. And then they just have regular microphones. I think one's a PV, I don't know what this even is. Just generic microphones. So this is for backup. Uh, drummer, bass and rhythm guitar. And then this, oh, then the, uh, you, the lead guitar will bring his own footboard or pedal board. This one's just set up just from pedals we had. Uh, just literally just zip tied into a board just so you can use them. And then it just has its own pedal for switching. Usually once it's set up, that's it. You you know, you might wah or something like that, but just kind of get your, the tone you like and use it for the song you're playing. And there's guitars. Handy to have one just in case you're playing and it just doesn't really work out and just grab a different one and try it. I have to go through all these guitars again and restring them. Have been, some haven't been done in two or three years, but others are done a whole bunch of times, the ones that get used more. So 
it all depends. Uh, that VMNT has to be cleaned up real bad. It's filthy, but it's a popular guitar, so it's used a lot. The pickups can barely see them. It's just so gross. But that's from use. That's what happens when you use them. And then, so we take that eight input. So there's uh, one from the board, which kind of sucks because when you sing backup, they'll go on the same channel. So it's coming out of this channel here, mono channel, just in a rear portage jack. And it comes down and that goes into the Behringer eight channel uh, interface, which it was left on, it shouldn't have been, but it gets slightly warm. It used to get warm when it was new. It got quite warm, but now it doesn't, so not too worried about it. So anyway, the main board for vocals, PA, goes into there in one channel. And then there's a couple for drums. So I just have, or three, just kick down there. And then I used to have it real close to the kick drum, but you just hear the smack of the tom hitting the front of the, 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 the kick drum skin. So up there, it seems to be working with the best. And a little bit of blanketing to kind of down or muffle down some of the high noises and stuff. I might throw it up on the cymbals. That's not really working that well, and if we work that, it's part of a microphone kit from a, from uh, Amazon. This pile kit. Yeah, that guy there. So that came with eight microphones and these uh, cymbal microphones here. And yeah, they don't really work that well. They're okay, but basically I have to get a better room mics or kind of two, one for each side for to get all the cymbals and then that a bit better. But again, this is just for recording the jam. So you get your snare. There's this one in the center here. It picks up the snare, not too bad. The song, the tom's not too bad, but none good, but it does kind of get you the beat of the song and you know, the tempo and stuff like that, the basic sound. So three on the drums, bait or kick, one of the cymbals that should be changed, and then one of the snare. I'll probably put uh, one over here, <clears throat> this area, to pick up the snare in this tom, and uh, kind of the right half for the or drummer's left of the kit, and then one for the drummer's right. And then there's one for rhythm, so that's four, leads five, bass is six, the PA is seven. And then the direct out of the lead amp is eight. This guy here. So there's your eight inputs, which basically records the band. So, you know, you can kind of review how you played and what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, how it's sounding and go from there. So anyway, this is what the guys are using. Uh, <clears throat> to record themselves and it goes into the Behringer into I just got this off uh, Amazon 200 bucks this is a work computer basically from any office computer but I was gonna get a laptop but they're kind of finicky oh if you ever take them out and stuff like that in the Sun whereas this one has a real fan a big hard drive is durable metal metal case so I got that uh, with Windows 10 and then I use just a cakewalk right now to record them. Because it's nice and simple, once you set it up, you get a template and then just record them. And uh, you can download all eight channels, the WAV files. So you take all eight WAV files and mix them or take them, take them to another computer on a thumb drive and mix them on another computer if you want. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, it's working pretty good. Uh, the guys have got a couple of gigs coming up, so it's a good place to practice and kind of noodle around, hang out, check out some stuff. And I don't know how big this room is. It's about, I'm guessing 15 feet by 20 maybe. 
maybe a touch bigger. But that's for a four person band, that's about just right because it's too much larger than it's kind of a too open. You don't kind of get kind of inter interacting as much or too spaced out in a way. It was too small and just crawling over each other and can't adjust anything and stuff like that. So it's pretty good space. And they should put some stuff on the walls to dampen the sounds a bit, but haven't done that yet. But probably will eventually. Okay, so that's how it's set up right now. I uh, hope this helps you out or gives an idea of what's going on. And just in case you have a band that you want to jam with and record them. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.